morning. Welcome to this week's weekly words from the Wes. And uh, today we're outside because um, the one thing during this lockdown is that we've had to get out and about and do a bit of a walk and we've enjoyed the countryside. And suddenly now we're starting to see buds appear and shoots coming on and spring is coming and that's great. So something to really look forward to. So we'll carry on and we'll show you something of our walk as we go round. Thanks. One of our favourite bits to stand and look out on. You can see the herons up in the bushes over there, up in the branches, and the swans and the geese. It's just lovely here, and it's, it's lifted our spirits to see a bit of nature around us. Well, so that was a, a little look round uh, one of our favourite walks around Rushton Lakes. And as I said on the walk, and as you could see, um, spring is coming or on its way. It's here, really. There's lots of blossom. There's lots of buds coming out and new life is springing up around us. And it's amazing, really, that despite all what's going on with the coronavirus and lockdowns and all the uh, terrible things happening about us, that uh, nature carries on because it's God's world and God created it. And it's just fantastic that each year things just come out and uh, and start to grow again after this sort of time of darkness and uh, sort of miserable time. And hopefully we'll be the same. We'll come out of lockdown the same. But uh, recently um, I was uh, bought a present. I bought some, some little pots of, um, to plant some seeds and grow some chilies and coriander for... Indian food. I like a good curry. So I thought, yeah, I'll have a go at that. So I planted, so I followed the instructions. I planted those tiny little seeds in a packet and I put them in these bowls, uh, these pots and I've watered them and I've waited. And each day I've had a look and nothing. And then I just think, oh, maybe it was a dud. Maybe it wasn't right. And oh, I've done something wrong, whatever. And so each day I've checked them and each day they've looked just like that. Until this morning when I came down on one of these pots, it looks like that. Wow. And they've just thrown up. In fact, you could probably see them growing now if you look carefully. They've just grown so fast. Now they've started to come up. Hopefully the other ones will come up too and not stay like that. But uh, this brings me on to, uh, to today's reading. We've been looking at uh, the Gospel of Mark and there's all sorts of stories in there, parables that Jesus told. And there's another one today, and Jeanette is going to bring that reading to you now, and I'll hand over to her. Thank you. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 21 to 34. Then he asked them, when someone lights the lamp, does he put a box over it to shut out the light? Of course not. The light couldn't be seen or used. A lamp is placed on a stand to shine and be useful. All that is now hidden will someday come to light. If you have ears, listen, and be sure to put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I tell you. To him who has shall be given, from him who has not shall be taken away, even what he has. Here is another story illustrating what the kingdom of God is like. A farmer sowed his field and went away, and as the days went by, the seeds grew and grew without his help for the soil made the seeds grow. First, a leaf blade pushed through and later the wheat heads formed and finally the grain ripened and then the farmer came at once with his sickle and harvested it. Jesus asked, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story shall I use to illustrate it? It's like a tiny mustard seed. Though this is one of the smallest of seeds, yet it grows to become one of the largest of plants with long branches where birds can build their nests and be sheltered. He used many such illustrations to teach the people as much as they were ready to understand. 
In fact, he taught only by illustrations in his public teaching, but afterwards, when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain his meaning to them. I'm now going to hand you over to Reverend Phil Hearson for this morning's service. A big thanks to the Madams family for introducing our time together this morning, and I'm really pleased that you're able to join with us. Please join me as I pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are worthy to receive our praises. You are the eternal Lord God. We praise you for your glory, your majesty, your goodness, your grace, the mercy that we do not deserve. There is nothing that we can bring apart from a repentant heart. And so today we ask you to forgive us again. Cleanse us through the blood of your Son who was given for us. As we go through this time of Lent, we realise that people are looking forward to the coming weeks in eager anticipation, hoping that restrictions will be relaxed. But may our anticipation be in a different way, as we eagerly anticipate the memory and celebration of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our minds are taken back to how he must have felt as he approached the cross with all its shame and pain and suffering, his ultimate cruel death, knowing the pain but looking to the joy that would be his. As the songwriter put it, millions redeemed will be Jesus' reward. Again, we pray for our world as it battles the pandemic. We thank you for the rollout of the vaccine, but we see that that is not without its problems. We ask that it might be safe, that those who are concerned will have their minds settled, and you will use this to bring us through these troubled times. We know that even though things look better in our country, there are those still ill, in hospital, and sadly, who will die. We also see other countries who seem to be battling against a further possible wave. Father, we pray that you, in your mercy, will bring an end to this pandemic. We thank you for your word, which we shall soon share. May we listen carefully and hear what you are saying to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me, if you would like to, in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Before we look at the word for this morning, let's have a worship song.
I don't know if you saw this week that Murray Walker, the F1 commentator or former F1 commentator, died at the age of 97. And I saw a small part of a tribute programme to him. I, I came in while it was part way through and I think they were asking him how he uh, had kept comment commentating for so long uh, and how he'd kept interested in motorsport. And his answer was quite interesting. He said this, if you don't keep this occupied, you're in trouble. Use it or lose it. Well, that operates in life in many ways, doesn't it? And we shall come on today to see how it's true in the spiritual realm too. Well, we're going to continue in Mark's Gospel. Last week, we looked at the parable of the sower or the seed where the seed was the word of God and it was it was sown, but some fell on uh, the path, some fell on rocky ground, some fell among thorns and some fell on good ground. And this week we're going to look at the piece immediately following that in Mark chapter 4 and verses 21 through to 34. And they are more parables there. And unhelpfully in one way Jesus doesn't give an explanation and I say unhelpfully in one way because I say is it unhelpful I suggest that it it isn't unhelpful to us you see parables are used so that our understanding depends on how well we listen Jesus said he who has ears to hear let him hear He's saying, what does this mean for you? How will you, how will, how will you let this impact your life? And we realise that Jesus had said, and as we looked at this last week, seek and you will find. You see, the ultimate uh, purpose of a parable is to reveal truth, not to conceal it. But understanding won't just come. It won't just come. We need to take a careful look at what Jesus says. The first thing uh, we find him talking about is a lamp on a stand. And this is in verses 21 and 22. Verses 21 and 22, Jesus said, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. Now think of a gift. You might buy it for someone and you keep it at home and you hide it from them. I'm sure you might have a hiding place that, uh, that you use. But it's not though 
to be kept there, is it? You're not always going to leave it there. It's hidden, but one day it's going to be revealed. So it's hidden so that it can be revealed. And it might be hard to keep it a secret. But the important thing is only temporarily hidden. You didn't buy it to hide it. You bought it to bring it out into the open. But Jesus didn't explain, explain the meaning to them. Although verse 34 does say that when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. So we need to ask now, what did he mean? And I've read different explanations, but I want today to, to bring the concept that Jesus is talking about himself, the kingdom of God and the gospel. See, he came as the light of the world. And when he came, he was temporarily kind of hidden. But this wasn't the purpose that he came for. He came that he might be revealed. And I saw this described as the messianic secret. See, Jesus came to bring in the kingdom of God. And it's clear from what we've already seen that it was a gradual unveiling. If you remember a few weeks back now, I guess, I talked about Jesus' roadmap and how uh, his roadmap would be revealed and the journey would be revealed, kind of, as Jesus was revealed. But at the beginning, he was concealed and hidden. But like the gift, that's not what he came for, to stay like that at the right time he would be revealed. It's the mystery, but not hidden forever. And there will be one day when everybody will recognise him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and every knee will bow before him. But as Jesus was revealed, so was the gospel. As the kingdom was revealed, the gospel that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. You see, Jesus and the kingdom and the gospel were never intended to be hidden but they were to be brought out into the open. And in verse 24, Jesus says, consider carefully what do you hear? Consider carefully what you hear. We have to be careful, don't we, as we listen to Jesus, as, as we seek him. You might go back right to the um, the story of when the Magi came to, to find the, 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 the baby uh, or the child. And they were told to make a diligent search. Carefully listen. We have to put everything in to listening and searching for Jesus. Donald English, in a commentary, said this, The time has come to make up your minds. Later, Jesus would ask his disciples who the people were saying that he was. And they said, some say, you're John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the other prophets. But Jesus says, what about you to them? Who do you say that I am? See, when we are confronted with Jesus, he is no longer hidden from us. And we have to make up our minds about him. Listen carefully to what you hear. And in verse 24, Jesus says, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And even more. Now what Jesus seems to be saying here is that the level to which they pay attention to what he's teaching them will be the level at which they receive the benefits of the kingdom. The level they receive the benefits of the kingdom. And this works in life. I don't know if you remember I talked about going to Syria and I went to some really great places and I really benefited from going there. But I had one regret, really, when I came home. And that's this, that I didn't spend more time before I went 
investigating the geography and the history of Syria before we went. Now some others on the trip obviously had and so when we were at a particular moment and the guide was talking about some time in history I was struggling but they were there they already knew the names of the people he was talking about they already knew the history of it and they were fully benefiting from what they had put in but this goes deeper you see, the more faith that we have, the more faith that we exercise in him, the more that our faith will grow. In verse 25, Jesus goes on to say, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Now, this is connected, I think, with consider carefully. Because if they do that, if they consider carefully, then if they grasp what Jesus is saying and if they seek for more and if they go deeper, then they will get more from it. But by just staying at surface level, they will lose the sense of God doing something and the fact that God is bringing in the kingdom. And as it wanes, it gets lost totally. You see, the closer that we listen, the more understanding we will be given. And that's obvious, isn't it? And we will keep exercising our faith. And this happens in life. You know, I, that Murray Walker example um, about using your brain. Use it or lose it, he said. And it works physically as well. If we uh, don't, don't keep exercising, it will become harder. And we won't be able to if we stop playing music. We, we might even have to stop playing altogether. We need to keep practising. We need to put it into operation. The writer, William Barclay, I'm not sure if he knew about me because he said this. Many a young man, uh, uh, many a man, sorry, in his youth had a working knowledge of French at school. Well, I'm not sure that I even had that level of understanding and working knowledge but now has forgotten even the little that he knew because he made no attempt to develop it and if you knew my French you would know how right he is I think fromage is cheese or gosh is it right I'm not quite sure use it or lose it and this operates in the physical realm and it operates in the spiritual realm as well. So how are you doing? You see, if you don't keep this occupied, said Murray Walker, what? You're in trouble. And as Christians, if we aren't exercising our faith, if we aren't paying attention to the Bible, if we aren't wanting and seeking to go deeper, but we want to stay kind of at a surface level, then we could be in trouble too. Secondly, Jesus talked about the growing seed. This is what the kingdom of God is like, he said. A man scatters seed on the ground. It reminded me a bit of the parable of the sower. Night and day, whatever the man is doing, the seed sprouts and grows. But he doesn't know how it does. All by itself, it produces corn. The stalk, the ear, the full grain, and then comes the harvest. It's a simple picture and we could say, yeah, but the man has to get the ground prepared and the man has to water it. That's true, but the emphasis is on the seed. It's out of the man's control. He can't make it grow. See, I can't understand how just a small seed or a, a, a bulb, maybe, can grow into a beautiful plant or a bountiful harvest. It's a miracle of nature. Scientists can take seeds and they can modify them, but they can't make them. They can't start from nothing and give it life. And Jesus says this is what the kingdom of God is like. Whatever we are doing, it's growing all by itself. 
Let's think about the seed because it's not unconnected with the parable of the sower. We, we saw there that some fell on good ground and it produced a crop. It was to different degrees, but it produced a crop. And the seed was the word of God, spoken then by Jesus, but now as we receive it. So is the way that we produce fruit in our lives when we receive the word um, connected with the kingdom growing? Well, yes, it is. Because how will the kingdom come? It, it will come, won't it, as the church grows. And the church will grow as Christians grow, as they take in the word, as they listen carefully and consider it carefully and then act upon it. You see, when we pray, your kingdom come, which we've already done in this service, we are realising that it's through us. And we can't pray your kingdom come if we're not willing for it to be through us. And then thirdly, Jesus talked about the mustard seed. Now, he said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A mustard seed, the smallest seed that you plant. Yet when it grows, it becomes the largest of all the garden plants with such big branches that even the birds can perch in its shade. See, the mustard seed was a symbol of something tiny. Jesus, in other places, used it to describe someone with even a tiny amount of faith. And we do the same, don't we? You might not realise that, but we do. If you're thinking about the amount of water somewhere, somebody might say it's so many bathfuls. Or if it's a bit bigger, they say it's so many Olympic swimming pools. And uh, how do you imagine an area of ground? Well, I imagine it, in a way I can, in the number of football pitches that could fit on it. It just helps us to get things into the right perspective, doesn't it? Something that we can understand. And Jesus is teaching here, through the parable, that the kingdom of God will start small. You see, with the coming of Jesus, as we saw earlier, hidden, the road map after saw him choosing 12 apostles. Just after he had ascended to heaven, uh, according to the book of Acts, it mentions 120 believers. Then at Pentecost, 3,000 were added on one day. And the kingdom of God is continuing to grow. And as I said, it's growing through people. For the kingdom is wherever God rules. So when we say your kingdom come, we then follow it with your will be done in my life. Rule, bring your rule to my life. The contrast is about the size of the seed compared to the eventual shrub or tree. And there's an old English proverb that has a similar meaning. Mighty oaks from little acorns grow. And if you've seen the size of an acorn and the size of an oak tree, you will understand. And the passage ends with many similar parables. Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. Just a, a comment there. I wonder what the others were. I wonder how many there were. We, we, we can sometimes imagine that this is all that, just that bit there, really, um, is what Jesus did and taught. But... John summed it up right, didn't he? At the end of his gospel, he said, Jesus did many other things. And he said, if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. What we've seen today and what we've heard and what we've read gives me great encouragement and great hope, but also a great challenge. Were there three distinct parts to it, or did they all fit together? Well, first of all, 
we could think about the growing seed. The growing seed. The word of God grows, but we don't understand how. Now, Google is great, but try Googling this. How to make a seed. I tried it. I mean, there's no answer. I got how to grow a seed, how to plant a seed, even how to make an origami seed packet. But only God can make it. Life through the word can only come through him. And that's a great encouragement. The kingdom growing is the work of God. Think about the mustard seed. The kingdom started small, but it's growing even today. 12, 120, 3,120. Today, well, I looked on Google and I did find an answer this time. A hundred years ago, it said there were about 600 million Christians. Today, the generally accepted figure is around 2.3 billion. Now, I know that they are worldwide and the kingdom of God really, if we're honest, is not growing rapidly here in the UK. And why? Well, that's for another time. You see, the kingdom growing does not rely on me. It's God's work. There's the encouragement for us. But what about the challenge? Well, I do have a part to play where I am. God uses his people to bring his kingdom as our faith is put into practice. Remember, Jesus says, whoever has will be given more. He said, consider carefully, grasp what Jesus is saying and seek for more going deeper. There's a place called Juaneng in southern Botswana. You might not have heard of it. You're forgiven if you haven't. And there you could walk at ground level, maybe enjoy it. I don't know what it's like, but if you were to dig down 625 metres, you would find the world's deepest diamond mine, one of the most valuable in the world. So here's the challenge. Do you want to walk and just enjoy the view? Or do you want to go deep? Do you want to go deeper and discover the precious diamonds in the word of God? And be part of the work of God as God's kingdom grows. That mustard seed, the tiniest, becoming the biggest bush or tree in the garden. So big that even the birds can perch in its shade. Walking at ground level, enjoying the view or digging deep and finding diamonds. I think we need to reflect on that and we're going to have a very simple reflection today. Am I happy to stay on the surface enjoying the view or do I want to dig deep seeking the things of great value in the word of God? Father, we thank you that your kingdom is growing. Your kingdom doesn't depend on us, but you have chosen us to hear your word and for it to grow, to bring forth fruit and thus to be used in the growth of the kingdom. We thank you that your kingdom is growing. Your kingdom doesn't ultimately depend on us. 
but you have chosen us to hear your word. You've chosen us to let it grow, to bring forth fruit, and thus to be used in the growth of the kingdom. Father, just as how a seed grows is beyond our understanding, so is why you should choose to use us. But Father, we thank you that you have. May we go deep and find the diamonds, the great gems in the word of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before we finish, let's have another worship song so you can either sing along at home or just read the words and take in the meaning behind this song. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we're going to be having coffee on Zoom at 11.30. You will have had the link if you get our weekly email. 
If not, then just get in touch with me and I, I can let you have that link. Next Sunday will be Palm Sunday and I hope to see you then. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us and hopefully see you next week.